Here are the nominees. Ben Affleck, Bradley Cooper, Daniel Day-Lewis, Hugh Jackman, and Joaquin Phoenix. And the BAFTA goes to Daniel Day-Lewis. gentlemen. Thank you, BAFTA. Um, just to, on the chance that I might one day have to speak in a, in a, on an evening such as this, I, I've actually uh, stayed in character as myself for the last 55 years. <laughs> um, and uh, I had a various uh, selection of BAFTA sets, downscaled, uh, uh, dating from the late 50s, placed in uh, every single room of every house that I ever lived in. Um, and uh, every time I rise from a chair, uh, uh, it spontaneously unleashes a soundtrack of thunderous applause um, with a few boos uh, and some drunken hecklers. Uh, I think... My fellow nominees, I, I don't know if I, I deserve this, but I do know that every single one of you deserves it at least every bit as much as I do. Um, my colleagues, uh, represented here by the wonderful producer, Kathleen Kennedy, uh, I, I, I miss you. I, I wish we were still on this expedition together. And uh, it turns out we weren't on a rudderless boat, uh, Steven Spielberg was uh, the rudder, the helm, the helmsman, the boat builder, the boat and the sea we sailed on, and to the end of my days, uh, thank you, Stephen, thank you, BAFTA. Congratulations, your fourth BAFTA. It's getting to be a bit of a habit now, <laughs> isn't it, for you? Um, Lincoln, you, you, know, you loved him. What an incredible man to have to play. Yet, when you were first approached about this great, um, incredible film, you, you turned it down. What changed in the process of the filmmaking or in, in the script or in the, in the telling of the tale that made you change your mind and think, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to see this? Well, one thing certainly changed, which is that uh, Tony Kushner um, wrote his version of the story, which, uh, which is, I think the second time I looked at it, it was uh, Tony's version, and I was certainly intrigued by the idea of that, but I still thought that's probably a wonderful thing for somebody else. Um, I honestly don't know, except it has something to do with time. Um, the passage of time, the way in which inexplicably one needs to express a certain thing through a certain person at a given moment in life. And uh, it just seemed to be that moment. That mm. oh, thank goodness. I love the way <laughs> life is that way, though, mm. isn't it? Is it, is it liberating as an actor to, to have no reference source for, for movement um, when, you're, when you're playing a character like this? Because, you know, you sort of start from scratch, really. I, I think it is. I mean, not, not everyone probably would feel the same way, but um, the problem when there is too much of visual uh, reference or even audio reference is that you're engaged in a process of mimicry, which uh, for me would ever more leave me with a, a sense of, uh, um, of superficiality, I think. So I, I think, it, t to me at any rate, it's helpful um, to ha have nothing. Have nothing. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then no then one can say categorically yes, that you got it wrong. That you got it wrong, of course. And, I mean, did you have any mm. preconceptions of working with Steven Spielberg? And, and how, how much has your opinion of him changed through working with mm. him? He must be a dear friend now. Yes, I think, I mean, we, we gave ourselves, or I asked when, when we decided we'd give it a go, um, I asked if I could have a year um, to try and get ready for it. And during the course of that year, we really um, became good friends. And I'd have been amazed if, if suddenly he'd grown horns um, <laughs> in his head when we started to shoot the film. But, uh, but uh, no, he was uh, everything, everything that I knew and, and much more in terms of his... Um, his willingness to, to create um, just a wonderful place for us in which we might try and do that work. And a wonderful place um, for Congratulations. Thanks Enjoy a lot. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks tonight. very much. Really thanks. Thanks. You too. Bye.